Hey guys, it's Cherry Vegas and in this candle making tutorial today I'm going to be answering one of my most asked questions and that is how do you pick the right wick for your candle? This is a question that I get asked all the time on all of my other candle making tutorials and so I'm going to show you today how you can work out which wick to use with what size container and there's a few important factors that you need to follow when you do do this. Um, so I've got three different candles and we're going to test these out and I'm going to explain why they work and why they don't work. The first thing that we need to talk about before we even start looking at the different types of wicks is our containers and our wax. This is going to affect which type of wicks that we're going to choose when we do our burn test. Once you've chosen your container size, you can then choose the type of wax that you want to use. So there are a lot of different waxes out there on the market. You have beeswax, soy wax, paraffin wax, coconut wax, and natural wax palm wax there are a lot and they all have different pros and cons so depending on what you want to achieve with your candle will depend on the kind of wax you use once you have picked the container and the type of wax that you're going to use you then can start looking at the different types of wicks if you are choosing a wax like beeswax or soy wax that have a higher burn point that's going to affect what kind of wicks you use whether you use wood wicks or cotton wicks um, or what size wick you use. If you're going to be picking a wax like say a paraffin wax which has a lower burn point you're obviously not going to need to use the same wicks that you would use even if it is the same can candle size container. Different wicks have different advantages. You'll find that your wood wicks give you a really nice crackle to your candle but they will burn through your wax hotter and faster which can also give you a really great scent through or it can burn through your wax too fast which means that takes down your burning time. Other wicks like your cotton wicks don't burn as hot as a wood wick and so they can be a great alternative if you are finding your candles are burning through too fast using a wood wick or if you're using a wax that just has a lower burn point like a paraffin wax. I find that these two styles of wicks are the most popular to use and you can use these in all of the different types of wax. You just need to adjust your wicks or the amount of wick that you are using to the type of wax that you have decided to go with. So if I was doing a bigger candle and I really wanted to use my cotton braided wicks, I might need to wick it two or three times to cover that full melt pool. If I was using a wood wick and it was a larger candle, I might need to take my wood wick up to the next size so that way I can still achieve a really beautiful melt pool. You will find on a lot of candle supply websites that they do have a general guide for wicks and for their container sizes. Please, please note that this is just a general guide and it's not a hard or fast rule because obviously if you change elements to your candle it might change the wick that you're going to need. Fragrance and colouring can also affect the way that your wax burns. So before you do your burn test and when you are making your candles, you need to make sure that they are all exactly the same no matter how many candles that you are testing. And I would really recommend writing down the type of wax you're using, the type of wick you're using, the size of your container with diameter, as well as how much fragrance you're adding in and how much colouring you're adding in. The more exact you can be, the easier it is to replicate this when you do start making more of these candles once you have chosen the correct wick size. When you are starting out your burn test, you want to start off with at least three candles to five candles working it out. If you have just poured your candles, I would recommend waiting a good few days before you do start your burn test because you want to let that wax and any fragrance or coloring settle into your candle. If you do pour it and wait for them to set and burn them straight away, that can affect your results in your burn test. With your burn test, you want to do your first one going for about anywhere from two to four hours, lighting your candles all at the same time and watching, taking notes and writing down how they are burning. Once you've done the first burn test, you can then blow out your candles and I like to wait till the next day to try out my second burn test because this replicates the way that someone would be using it in their house. They wouldn't just be burning the candle straight through, they would be lighting it for a bit using it for a bit, turning it, blowing it out, and then maybe using it the next day or the day after again. So that way I can replicate what someone would be using their candle for in their home and make sure I get a candle with great results. 
What do you want to look for when you are doing your burn test? So a candle that's got the right size wick that has been wicked properly, you'll get a nice even melt pour the whole way around your container. You'll find that you won't get any flickering or minimal flickering to your wick and your flame is either not too high or too small. You'll also find that you'll get a really nice scent throw. A wick that is too big for your container and wax you'll find that it will have a really high flame that might also be sooting around the edge of your candle and it might also be having a little bit of smoke going off. You'll also find that it will probably be burning through the fuel, which is your wax, really fast, which then shortens down your burn time. It can also get quite hot to touch, especially if you are using a glass container and can sometimes crack your container from too much heat. A candle that has a wick too small for it, you'll tend to find that when you light it, you'll get a lot of tunneling because it won't be able to heat up enough to burn through the amount of fuel that you have in that container. You'll also find that the candle is most likely going to extinguish yourself while it is burning and you won't get a great hot throw when you are using it. You'll also find because it is burning through down faster through the wick, you're not going to get a great burn time. I know doing all of this might seem a bit tedious, but once you do have your final results, that way you don't need to go and test this again as long as you're using all of the same products again and again, and you're going to have a candle with great results. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you've gotten some benefit from it. This is one of the most asked questions that I get, so I thought going and explaining it like this is going to help a lot of people out. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like this video if you got benefit from it and subscribe to my channel for more helpful candle videos.